So let's get into these two stocks that you have kind of sent over to our team here. The first one, uh, I thought was pretty interesting because, you know, we're going into the winter and this seems to me like it'd be more of a summer stock. What is, what, what's this first one? Yeah, so I thought we'd discuss uh, two today. Uh, and, and what's different about them uh, is one, I think, uh, you know, has a little more economic cyclicality to it. Um, and the other one has much less economic cyclicality to it. But I think with a long term horizon, both can be fantastic investments. So the first one is a company called uh, Ferguson Corporation, which is a little over a $20 billion market cap uh, company based here in the U.S. that primarily distributes plumbing and HVAC supplies. So uh, it's a really neat business where they have a lot of scale. They're number one or number two in most of their market segments. Um, and like other value added distributors that I've studied over time, Daniel, they sit right in the middle of a really fragmented supplier base. So they have tens of thousands of suppliers that they buy from. And then they have over a million customers. So super fragmented on both sides. And Ferguson can can use their you know, knowledge and expertise to really help their customers um, and they can use their fiscal presence and boots on the ground to really help their suppliers and increase their their sales effort. Um, so this is a company that's been really well run for a long period of time. Um, and there have been there are a few things that are really interesting about it today. One is, you know, anything that is related to housing or construction, um, those stocks haven't really been good stocks this year. So you have a fantastic company that has had really high returns on capital. And today it's trading at around 11 or 12 times earnings. Um, secondly, if you look back at the company's historical financials, it has been part of this UK listed company called Wolseley. And over the last 10 years or so, management started selling off a lot of their lower quality businesses that were based in other countries in Europe and have now focused on their crown jewel U.S. business. And earlier this year, they actually moved the primary listing over to the United States. So they're now based on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and so you, you potentially have this interesting dynamic where uh, the company may have been sold by some index funds in Europe but it's too new of a company in the U.S. to be held by the larger indexes like the S&P 500. Um, so I think that is, you know, one possibility over the next 12 months or so um, that this business could get added to one of these larger indexes. Um, and and that that could be a catalyst for the stock. But the main thesis behind this, hey, this is a business that sits in between a really fragmented customer base and supplier base has really good returns on capital. A lot of the purchases that their customers make are not completely discretionary. Um, and it's just a really good business over time that probably grows a little faster than, G than GDP, takes some share from the broader industry, which still has a lot of mom and pops, can, in, can increase their margins a little bit each year. And then through smart capital allocation, probably grows their earnings in a normal year, uh, low to mid teens. So if we look out a few years, Daniel, I think you could see, you know, a business with significantly higher earnings um, and some multiple uh, expansion as well. And, and this could be a really, a really, you know, good stock over time. So, all right, we got Ferguson stock. And I like this next one that you also brought to us um, because they're based out of Toronto, I believe. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. And actually Seeking Alpha just started covering Canadian stocks this year. So it's kind of cool to be able to talk about this one. Would you mind walking us through what, what it is and what's your thesis? Want to listen to the full episode as a podcast? Subscribe to Wall Street Breakfast and get Week and Bite every Saturday morning in your favorite podcast app. 